All right, so thumbs up, thumbs down. Pose Virgo anabolic window. Uh, no. Yeah. yeah. It's easy one, just no. This is one of those things where I actually think science is nice because it does debunk these kind of, I like science for nutrition in a lot of cases, yeah. as well as supplements, like debunking stuff that just doesn't really work. Where science kind of falters, I think, is is individualistic training decisions and yeah. how much volume should you do and what yeah. technique should people use, just because that is so individual. But like the response to a supplement or, or something like that, uh, I think this is where science is a, is a, a good resource. And so, yeah, pe people don't need to... I mean, people used to take their protein shake to the gym and drink it right after the workout, like immediately after the workout. Yeah. Whereas, you know, now people are a little bit more chill. And I think that's a good thing. I think it's a good thing to realize that you don't have to be super on point with yeah. your timing of much of anything really in yeah. order to maximize your growth, which again, evolutionarily, it makes sense yeah. because yeah. you're not gonna lose your gains if you're out on a hunt and you fight something, you don't have to eat right away. You can wait a few hours, there's no, no, no real issue. Yeah, yeah. Detoxing, uh, it's like just drink water. <laughs> it's just, just, just drink some more water. You know what I mean? Like I, the, the, the tea, the tea detoxing, the all this extreme stuff. It's like I'm taking this, I'm getting, I'm drinking, you know, apple cider vinegar to help alkaline my whatever. It's like just drink a lot of water and yeah. you'll be fine and you'll clean yourself out quite naturally. Yeah, just I mean, having having kidneys and a liver, I, I think goes a long way to, yeah. <laughs> to doing that. Like they kind of. That's kind of what they do. <laughs> yeah. They've got it covered. So unless you have some issue there, then you're probably probably good on the tea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, eating clean. Ooh, this is a tough uh, one. I'm not gonna look at what you did. Uh, can I do a? Can I do one of these? Can yeah. Do I'm gonna go thumbs up, but this is this is a tricky one. I'm gonna do. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna add. I'm gonna add a side thumb. Uh, side thumb. Because I'd be a hypocrite if I was like eat clean. <laughs> My thing is, it's like people. People put emphasis on eating clean and still get fat, right? There's yeah. the, like, I eat clean, I'm like, you know, I'll gain weight, I'm like, well, how much are you eating? But I eat clean, I eat this, I'm like, but how much are you eating? Like, yeah. tell me that, number one, it's that kind of notion of, if I eat clean, I'm not gonna get fat. It's like, you'll get fat eating, you know, all the healthiest foods in the entire world. Uh, yeah. But also at the same time, it's like, the whole this whole journey for me, and maybe you can agree yourself, is not to get people to live a sustainable lifestyle where they can't eat anything. It's yeah. like, I want you to get to a healthy lifestyle so you can enjoy things still, but understand to do those things in moderation, right? Like I had Oreos last night, everyone knows I'm an Oreo. I get a more addict. I love Oreos. I'm sorry, but uh, I'll eat them. But like, the, it's, it's not to say like, I can't ever eat Oreos again. I prioritize how I feel and look over craving and you know habits have helped me that way but enjoy your life if we're not there yet in terms of like you know you can't control your food or your cravings and yeah stay away from those things that are are not clean but like in the end it's like you know we have to have some kind of balance and that's why i gotta go one of these things because it's I gotta... yeah it's i think dr eric helm said something like what who determines what makes a food clean or not clean like sweet potato good baked potato not good brown rice good white rice nah. what about bread what about milk okay a salad clearly but what about the dressing too much dressing like not enough dressing and so <laughs> yeah. it's like there's not there there are these rules that don't really have any kind of explanation behind them i think it's a pretty decent baseline because yeah. Generally, just eating whole natural foods is, is a good idea. Getting enough fiber, getting enough protein, having a balanced diet, enough fat, enough enough carbohydrate, not going to any extremes. I think it's a good idea for most people, but it can be taken too far. I think it's called orthorexia, where, which I don't entirely, I mean, if it is obsessive and it is, oh, I could never eat a candy bar ever once. Oh, I can only eat, I can only eat, carrot cake on my birthday like that kind of thing that's that's where it's it, it is becoming needlessly restrictive because it's not even helpful at that point it, it's yeah. actually probably counterproductive it's often kind of disguised as discipline people yeah. will say oh i'm so disciplined no you just have some issues <laughs> like yeah. you just 
you just have some issues. Like that's not that's not discipline. And so I think it's a decent baseline. But as you said, people have to realize you can still get really fat if you have a big appetite, especially off yeah. of only clean foods. And yeah. so if you're gaining weight, it means you're in a caloric surplus, and that is what really matters. Yeah. Getting into a deficit or maintenance or wherever you want to be which might involve eating clean foods primarily, maybe less of them. You might eat some not quote unquote clean foods, be in a deficit, be losing weight and end up healthier than the person who was eating a whole bunch of quote unquote clean foods. So, um, I mean, there have been studies where someone, or at least case studies where someone ate only junk food, they lost a lot of weight and all their blood markers improved because losing weight is just that powerful of a driver of health. And so yeah. even if your food was not as quote unquote healthy, the yeah. end outcome was still a net positive. Now, I think the best possible option would be losing weight, but also eating yeah, healthy. Yeah. Yeah. But sometimes you have to meet people halfway yeah. where yeah. they really like these foods and including them in moderation if they can is, is probably a good idea. But sometimes if you restrict something, well, then you end up eating a whole bunch of it later. And so yeah. it's it's one of those things where you, you have to meet people halfway, you have to find balance, you can't go too far in either direction. I have counted calories at points, I've had cleaner or not cleaner diets at points, and I would look at balance as a long-term thing. Every day yeah. doesn't have to be balanced, not even every month. Usually December is a big month of eating. Thanksgiving yeah. to New Year's, you're yeah. probably gonna be more likely into a caloric surplus. And that's totally okay. You put on a couple pounds, five pounds maybe, and then you take it off in the spring. I think, again, evolutionarily, win winter's cold, especially up yeah. there in Canada. So it's like, yeah. put on a little bit of fat around those months, yeah. maybe it's not the end of the world, right? And then yeah. in the summer, in the spring, you, you cut it off and, and I think that's totally normal. And so giving yourself a little bit of flexibility but not so much that you go way off the rails in either direction, uh, I think is probably the way to go. Yeah, for sure. Creatine monohydrate. Yeah, it's it's all of it's the good. benefits. It's studied, it's been the most, probably the most studied supplement. It actually works, three to five grams. Uh, it helps your brain. People don't really understand that it's a very good uh, you know supplement for your brain, cognitive health, and muscle. And yep. all the rumors about it are completely wrong, so. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I think monohydrate is the one to get. Uh, yeah. Most of the time when people are selling other variations, it's just like a more expensive, not as good, or maybe just as good, but more expensive yeah. kind of situation. I think it's good. I think there's about a third of people who don't respond to it, maybe because they're already getting it in their diet. I mean, if, if someone is a carnivore, which I don't necessarily recommend following the carnivore diet, but if you're on that, you're probably getting quite a bit of creatine anyway. I would say if someone's vegan, there's a pretty good chance that they're gonna to wanna to supplement with creatine, yeah. um, just cause you're probably not getting very much in your diet. I would say if you start using creatine, you should be tracking your lifts already, but, but track your body weight. And so if you get a sort of two to four pound bump in body weight and you look fuller and you know your, your lifts are going up and maybe you're making better than average progress, then you're responding well. But if you add in creatine over the course of a week or two, and you're taking it every day and you just don't really notice anything at all, you just might not be responding all that well yeah. to it. Um, but then again, it is sometimes hard to tell if you're gaining weight or losing weight. And so it, it is also a pretty affordable supplement. So yeah. I think it's one of those ones, one of the few ones where even if you can't 100% tell if it's working, it might be worth taking again, maybe just for the cognitive benefits yeah. of anything else. Yeah. BCAAs. Yeah. You get enough of them in your food. Um, I think they're good. We have fun. We have a BCAA. Uh, well, more most are EAs. That was one of the other ones, but I'll I'll put them both the same. That same class, but you know, your essential amino acids and your BCAAs. You get enough of them in your food. Um, if anything, it helps you. If it helps you drink your water more because most of them they taste good. Great. Um, ours, our our Blue Star one has is more of a electrolyte. So you have like the coconut water powder and the um, uh, pink lemon seasonal for like you know electrolytes and whatnot and that it's mixed with BCA. So it's more of a, that thing, but like, again, for me, it's like, if you're, if you're eating enough protein, you're not, you're, don't need, don't break the bank. If you have enough money, you wanna have yeah. an extra thing, not drink your water, go right in. That's how I look at it. Yeah, I went through a phase where I would go to Hong Kong, which is right across the border from here, and I would get 
BCAAs every few months. So I would I would go to a different city just to get BCAAs and. Um, <laughs> Yeah, which is <laughs> kind of wild, but I, I I hope we're not ruining anyone's placebo effect here. Um, <laughs> yeah, definitely feel like I got like I got some <laughs> back in 2018 or 17 or whatever it was. They, I actually don't mind the taste. It's it's definitely not for everyone. But I was taking like the pure BCAA powder, so it was like yeah, was, I didn't mind it because I associated it with gains. <laughs> Because I was kind of newish to lifting. But yeah, if, if it keeps you hydrated, if it gets you to drink water, I think that's a plus. Um, certainly no downsides. It can also, some of the research says that it can improve your muscle recovery and like get you less sore. And so if it helps you train a little bit more frequently, maybe. But in terms of like gaining muscle, yeah, I don't think it's going to be uh, a game changer. Mine's like if you're going to, if you're, if you're like, if you're doing, say, your cardio right after your training, I would, that's when I'm like, hey, have some BCAs. That'll be, you know, more so EAs. That's when I would yeah. recommend, or if you're doing like fasted, whatever. If you're doing fasted cardio, then have some with your with your training. That'll be fine. Um, yeah. Um, all right. Ice baths. Yeah. Yeah. They're just. I mean, they actually impede muscle growth, which I actually kind of funny find funny because you have all these sort of masculinity gurus doing cold plunges and bro you're killing your gains you are literally this is one of the few things that has actually been measured and actually kills your gains and it's supposed to be this hardcore thing it's it's one of those things where i don't think we need to make life any more challenging than it already is so sort of like with training when you have people doing these crazy setups standing on a bosu ball someone throwing a bobcat into your face when you're squatting, that kind of stuff. <laughs> you don't need that. I mean, just stand on the ground and squat. And if that's not challenging enough, do more of them or add more weight and then, you know, you're fine. And so I think it's one of those things where, yeah, I'm, I'm sure they're uncomfortable. They look hardcore, but why? <laughs> Is your life just already that easy that you need to go out of your way to make it more challenging? And maybe there are some other benefits, but but certainly not most. Yeah, this, that's basically same. It's uh, it's it's the all like the you know that sauna, you know red light sauna, whatever. All this, all these things. It's like just train. Like if you're like yeah. most of them are you like they're uh, you're not gonna lose fat from it. Like they uh, you know if you I did we did I did ice baths when I played football. So we have like two a days and and we're beat up. And our legs are killing, and you know, yeah, I go in the ice bath, and like I feel like I didn't get beat up that day, and that's good for that. But for you know, overall, you know, muscle growth, not a good thing to do whatsoever. And you know, it just takes away from the main focus, which it should be, you know, tackle the tackle the basic stuff first. Like you know, like make sure you have protein, actually training, eating of calories, sleeping, you know, hydrate, do those things. Like. Yeah. Don't worry about that. And you know, if you want to add that stuff in later down the road, cool. But like, also, again, it's gonna take away from your from your gains anyway. So don't do them. Like, it's I. They make me so angry. Like, they they. I don't angry. They make. They, I get annoyed when I see someone like getting like, oh yeah, and they're sitting there, and you can tell they're just like hating their life. I'm like, yeah, it's mental clarity. It's like you are only. You can only focus on how cold you are. You're not. There's no clarity going on right now. You're thinking like, how many more minutes do I have? That's why they. Say, no one. Have you ever seen somebody set their like and not set a clock and you sit into one of those things? They don't. They go. They go inside. They they get their clock. They click it right away and they're like this. And they slowly get into it and they're staring <laughs> at their clock like this. I'm like, give me a break. Stop it. <laughs> there's a way, there's way more things you can do to help your help your gains than literally stud, stunt your growth and get you freezing cold and pop maybe possibly hypoglycemic or not hypoglycemic um what's it called when you uh, hypothermia yeah yeah hypothermia yeah sorry one of the hypos either way but yeah um well i, I just want to add like i usually train six days a week and i often get comments from people who are saying oh how do you recover what do you do to recover well, i i eat and i sleep and i try not to stress <laughs> too much about recovering and, like, do you do this? Do you do ice baths? Do you do, do you get a massage? How many days a week do you get a massage? Like all these things. I don't do any of them, right? I, th I think just focusing on the big things of, of sleeping enough. I mean, sleep is huge. Sleep really is, yeah. it's it's yeah. huge. And it's it's overlooked, even, even though it's it's something that's kind of obvious, but, but people are like, okay, so I sleep five hours a night. What can I do for recovery? Well, sleep. you kind of have to sleep. Yeah. I had a couple I mean, more hours. <laughs> exactly. I mean, and so yeah, sleep, diet, 
and then stress, I would say those are the big three. And then anything beyond that is going to be pretty marginal. Um, last but not least, steroid. I gotta say, and I and I am glad you said. I'm glad you get to put a thumb on because like when I talk with steroids, I still get the you know some people like you're such a hypocrite. You did them before and you got all of your success. And I'm like, no, I didn't. Number one, most of my success came after me not doing steroids um, right. and really not competing. Like to be honest, um, but again, it's like I'm saying no because unless you. 100% need it if you're in dire health for it, if your mental health is dependent on it, because all the things that you're, you know, all the things you're, that uh, TRT does help with when you're low testosterone, when you actually have low T is necessary. But until then, no one's hit their genetic limit. No one's trained long enough to really reach there. Train your ass off harder. There is actually stuff in that do help. Creatine, Tom Kylie does actually work and whatnot. Like those, do that and you know take care of the basics before we you know get into the game of possibly ruining your natural life for the rest of your life um, I'm saying this with experience so I'm like if you can avoid it for good avoid it trust me the only time women are gonna like you being on testosterone is if it's making this thing work that much better and that's yeah. <laughs> so yeah I agree with that and yeah I mean for me it, it's it's definitely a thumbs down where I think at the very least, if you're talking to a young man, just say wait, just just wait. Because usually just waiting is enough. Just wait and keep training, keep learning, and you're probably gonna see, oh, I, I'm still growing. And so why why would I take that big, that big leap to that side of things if I'm still growing? And so at, at the very least, just wait, you know? I'm not gonna say never ever do them or they're evil because Again, kind of going back to that diet thing of, oh, I can't have it ever. Oh, I'm gonna, oh, there, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have it. And so I think it's the same thing with anabolics when you say like, oh, never do it, or they're evil. I mean, I actually think steroids should be legal. Cause I mean, I think part of the reason, I mean, prohibition doesn't really work. And so, yeah. I mean, we do need more education, but, but you know, people just wait, just, just spend five to 10 years, which sounds like a really long time if you're a young man. But just give it a few years in the gym, getting experience. I mean, Ronnie didn't take anything until he was probably 30-ish. 29, 30, 28, 31, yeah. somewhere in there. And look how, I mean, he turned out pretty decent in terms of, of yeah. being a professional bodybuilder. So, yeah. you know, even if that is your goal, I would still push it back until, you know, probably 25 minimum. And at that point, you're going to have better judgment anyway, which a lot of young men don't really want to hear. But... But it's true, and and so yeah, at, at a minimum, just just wait, learn to enjoy lifting, learn to love lifting, learn good technique, good programming, because then when you do go on, you're gonna get more out of it anyway. So yeah, just just save that for either never or or later. Well, man, that's that's it, man. We just put in we put in a full shift, man. That is it, man. I gotta thank you for coming on. Absolute pleasure getting to actually know you for the first time and be able to chop it up and you know really tackle some really good topics that I know are gonna definitely benefit everybody that's gonna be watching this. So um, if you aren't following Jeff, I'll put his tag here, but just so you can say it anyway, follow him on Instagram at Jeffrey Verity Schofield. Right. Hopefully cool. it all and works. on and on YouTube as well too. Uh, I think it's actually at GVS, which is a little bit easier to spell. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I also want to spell your name without typing it. I'm like Jeff. Is it G O I G O G O G E O? G O G E O. Yeah. <laughs> um, and guys, like he's got, you know, um, he's a coach, a great coach as well too. The great, great ebooks as well. So head on over to your we have a website too. Or yeah, yeah. VeritiFit.com. Yeah, go to Verity Fit, guys, and grab yourself some ebooks as well too. If you don't find anything on his, you want to, you know, check mine as well too. It'll be great. But yeah. We're going to have him on again um, in the future and hope you guys enjoyed the video. I know you guys definitely did and, you know, we'll see this happen again and again. Thank you for coming on. And uh, yeah, man, until next time, you guys know what it is. Iron Shepherd's Iron, progressive overload your life. In the meantime, keep dream chasing. Peace.